Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. How about in uh, relapse refractory multiple myeloma? What, what are some of the key factors um, that factor into your treatment decision making? So uh, again, for relapse refractory myeloma, you know, uh, we lump relapse refractory all together. I think we should make some distinctions there. So if a patient has relapsed, and it really depends on what the kinetics of that relapse is, it depends on how long his initial remission has been, how uh, distant his previous treatment has been. The one thing I do want to stress is we do, unlike some of the other uh, cancer types, in myeloma will use retreatment with the same drug. For example, if I have a patient who I've treated with lenalidomide with bortezomib and dexamethasone, and then I've continued on lenalidomide maintenance, and this patient has uh, relapsed three years after that, you know, I would go back to using a bortezomib-based regimen, and we do see responses with that. I would probably use bortezomib with something else new if I had the ability to do that. But using drugs which they've seen before, and as long as they've had a window of at least six months, it's certainly totally reasonable to go back to the old drug. As far as newer drugs, the good news is, you know, our pipeline in myeloma keeps increasing, which is exciting. And, um, you know, in the old days, we did not have the luxury, Joe, and I would say, yes, you can use this, this, or this. Yep. Right now, we got to scratch our heads and say, you know what, we have so many options, what do I pick? So in addition to looking at what that relapse looks like, I do think you have to look at the patient as well. And you have to look at the comorbidities of the patient, look at patient convenience, look at what the best treatment would be. We have different proteasome inhibitors now. We have different IMIDs now that we can choose from. And depending on that patient profile, you go to either LEN-based regimens, you can go to pomalidomide-based regimens, you can consider using carfilzomib um, in different settings. Uh, and a lot of that is dictated by how your patient presents to you and what the associated clinical features would be in that particular patient. Let's move on to treating relapse refractory disease. What factors play in the ro a role in making treatment decisions? So the challenge of trying to dis decipher what to do for a patient in relapse is that it's dependent on many factors. There are factors, for instance, like what line of therapy is this? Is this an early relapse or a late relapse? What did they get as part of their initial treatment? Was it a proteasome inhibitor? Was it an IMID? Was it both put together? And what were the side effects and toxicities of that initial therapy? Did they get a side effect or toxicity that makes treating them in the relapse setting much more difficult to reuse that same agent again? You factor those three different variables in with a fourth, which is risk, genetic risk of the myeloma that's relapsed. Is it a standard risk or a high-risk myeloma? Is it a slow relapse or an aggressive relapse? I'm not putting all these factors in to confuse you. What I'm really trying to say is that it's not a simple if this, then do this answer. You really have to take all of these factors into account as you make a decision for an individual patient about, am I gonna use a proteasome inhibitor? Am I gonna use an IMID? Am I gonna put them together? Is it gonna be carfilzomib, bortezomib, lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and hopefully now soon, many other drugs in addition to that. So with all the many options available, what is your preferred treatment regimen in relapse refractory MM? Well, I think um, you know, there, there's no simple algorithm to answer that question. If a patient has progressed on lenalidomide-based maintenance therapy after a transplant, I'm probably more likely to go back to a proteasome inhibitor-based approach, uh, whether that's a proteasome inhibitor like bortezomib or carfilzomib with DEX, with cyclophosphamide, or bringing in the newer imid pomalidomide, it really depends on what other factors are at play there. So it's not so simple uh, to sort out the, the roadmap. Do you ever retreat? Absolutely. We with the same regimen that I used yes. before? Absolutely. And I think, you know, a patient that did not get any therapy uh, as maintenance relapses two or three years down the road that really has only seen four cycles of RVD and then a transplant, I would have no issue retreating that patient with RVD. I'd also have no issue using one of the drugs that the patient may have been resistant to 
if I'm adding a second drug that may reestablish sensitivity. And that's a really important topic in myeloma because in solid tumor oncology, that's not done. Once a drug is done, it's done. But in myeloma, we can bring them back as long as it's part of an active combination.